So yeah, who's who's writing bad codes? Who's not? <laughs> yeah, how do you know that? How do you know that? Just because this written clear, clear that you thought you could learn something from me that will make your code shiny and Mr. Prop and things like that, right? Okay, so we try to do that tonight together. And the main title is clear PHP reference. Who's not doing PHP here? <laughs> uh, no. Okay, so at least you know one word. Clear, apparently you don't know because obviously some, some of you are writing bytecode. And reference is basically a dictionary, right? The dictionary, it's a, it's a list of everything you should do and you have in your code and that make it clear. That's the, the, the end of the thing. So what are we going to review today? Uh, we're going to review all those little rules that are going to be in your code. How do I spend so much time there? Uh, I'm actually doing at the days uh, service um, Static analysis. Static analysis is basically the scripted version of myself when I read code and I say, oh, this is bad, this is bad, and you should change that. For what reasons? That's my job. But the computer is now doing the job. So that's where I got all those learns, and I'm learning that from your code. So probably we'll be mentioning a few errors you've seen there. So before I actually bore you to death, let's take an example. And can anyone raise their hand when they find the problem there? <laughs> So someone, was, someone has read my slide before because I was there. So that's fine. I don't, I don't see anything. You don't see anything. <laughs> this code compiles. I mean, you can, it can, you can try to write it. PHP minus L, the script, it works. And you can run it. That works also. So why is it bad code? Hmm? Yeah, there is no color syntax. Exactly. <laughs> The variable are way too short. <laughs> All right. There is no spaces. Yeah, no parentheses. So it took me 14 years of PHP before I thought, hey, maybe I can have several variables with similar arguments with the same name. And I tried it, and it works. OK? So I thought, well, I'm probably the, the only crazy guy to try that. And then I checked. I currently have like 600 open source projects on my machine. And I found 2% of them who were using I don't know if I call that a feature of a bug, but <laughs> two persons, that's like six of them, right? But I won't give names. So the good news for you is something is going to help. Good. Yeah, this is why you should all switch to PHP 7, because yeah, it will yell something. Now, if you also want to have a nice troll, there are good news for you. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> so. These kind of things, well, you, you probably didn't think about using several times the same <laughs> argument at the same time. <laughs> and this is one of the different rules that should apply in your code. Uh, they are, of course, more complex than that. But who's usually providing that kind of standards? Who's telling you what is good code? Is usually when you have a framework, for example, then they will tell you a number of things that should be done with the framework or should not be done. There are even people, because Raffaele is apparently not a framework. I used to think that too, right? Uh, but apparently he's not. He's a really guy. Um, but there are there. So let's, let's take an example. WordPress. I just got the WordPress standard. So first thing you understand is that convention, standards, reference, and all of that has the same meaning. But this is the list of things that they recommend you when you write PHP. OK? Well, even before using the API and things like that. There are different. I would say there are two different kind of things that are mixed here. Things that are basically purely presentation. So that will go with those, those, and that will be it. This is the, those first rules only explain you how you should write your code. Okay? You should put spaces around operators. You should not put any space between a function and the opening parentheses. Lots of things like that. Right? This is good. But that does not interest me because it doesn't have a much impact on running the code itself. I expect things to be, to be, me, to be uh, for example, leading to a bug. The previous thing you've seen early, earlier was a bug. Well, it could be used, maybe, but it was a bug. Now, these are just writing convention. The rest are more or less what I'm interested in, right? 
Okay, simple quote, double quote, we're not going to fix that tonight, but at least this is something that has an impact on the system, right? It used to have. Uh, short high, short uh, codes of, of PHP, um, the other condition is not exactly PHP itself, but you still have uh, a, a benefit on the code if you want it, internal operators. So those are the things we're going to see. And I like to uh, situate, locate the reference I'm, I'm going to list in a second, between conceptions and coding conventions. So coding conventions is the first yellow part I've seen you in the WordPress reference things that just explain you how you write code, right? Doesn't change the code itself. Conceptions is everything around like design patterns or architectures. You want to put your database here, master-slave replication, things like that. It has some impact on the code, but it's not exactly here. In between, there is something, some things that are specific to PHP that do not really apply to other languages, but it's just the gotchas we like to avoid. So now, we go, and I will ask you many questions, so once in a while you can raise your hands. Can I give the books for, to people who give good answers? No, no. no? okay, so I'll keep we that for myself. We have an amazing raffle system. <laughs> so, work. what is wrong here? And just one of you, because you've got too many of them, just, yes? The C should have a default variable as well? Yeah, or the B should not have it, okay? Again, this is, this is something very different from the pr first problem. The first problem is not even written in the manual, it's just pure common sense. This is written in the manual. The manual tells you that if you put default values, they should be at the far end on the left side of your argument list. Except it doesn't tell you that PHP also accepts that you put them anywhere. What will happen if you do that? If I leave B and C, well, if I just leave B also, it will have another a problem. Yeah. What will happen is that B, B will be a default at 2 if I just give A. Yeah, yeah, if I give A, then PHP will say, OK, B, and it will. No way to give a and, C. and the C will raise an error. Yeah. So that's it. How do you end up with that kind of problems? I mean, because I told you the first mistake, which everyone laughed at, was like 2% of the projects, OK? So it's not too many. This is like 20%. I mean, give it a try. This is really surprising. That's it. That's refactoring. So initially, probably they had only two of them, and then they suddenly decided to move this function into a class. The class is derived from something else. Something else tells them that they need three arguments, but there is no way to put a default value for the last one. I mean, at least something that was, uh, that's clever or not null or zero or something. So just leave it that there. As long as they're still using everywhere three arguments, that will be fine, until someone decides just to use two, and then that's going to blow. Okay, the big discrepancy here is, and this is what's always surprising me when I when I admit that, the manual says you should only put default value at the end. Good, but when you check it, you only get a problem at execution time. Why is it that we cannot lint that, just like it's going to be the case for PHP 7 and those multiple identical arguments, and say that right away? This is something that we can check easily, right? And that should be fixed. So. The good news is <laughs> that is not checked in PHP 7. That's really sad. So we mentioned a number of problems that were in the manual. Here is another one. Where is the problem here? There are two of them. There is one obvious and another one less obvious. So the, the beginners can give me the obvious one. Assigning is if is if everyone does that, so it's like 99%, maybe you don't have. It's okay, it's okay. It works, it's the same. What's the first problem? Okay, I need beginners, okay, not expert level. First problem? Give it a try. The first argument will return a Boolean, not a string. The first, what? In the if statement to check? Yeah. It will return a Boolean. Okay, uh, there is, hmm. you're kind of mixing the two answers I'm waiting for. I think that the age there will be known uh, when the, the, the second age, to begin uh, precise age. There? It will be uh, not declared there. 
Okay, the problem is really at the file get content level, not actually in the if then itself. I don't think there is. Yeah, yeah, there is no difference between the URI, let's say it's a website, if the f or the file actually. The file does not exist, it raises an error and it returns false. If the file exists and the file is empty, we're stuck the same. There is no differentiation between a between file that does not exist and the file that does exist. Okay? Would that be more off, well, obvious to you if I would not use, use file get content but use like esteropos? No? No one heard about this problem, right? So this is where we actually do the, the, the comparison. There is actually a second problem here which is linked to the comparison. Now imagine we, we, f we get the content from the website and the website, because of a little problem, uh, starts the HTML page with a zero. <laughs> now what will happen? Um, yeah, what will happen? The, the zero, well, the zero plus the whole file comes back here. And then PHP says, okay, I'm going to compare this string and the other one and, oh, looks like the, side, the thing on the left side Start with a zero, it must be a number. Okay, let's try to turn that into a number. There is a zero, good, there is a, uh, this weird character. Okay, I drop the rest, it's a zero. Then I compare with the other thing. Oh, it's an empty string, so I compare that with zero. Okay, over. Is that okay? Well, or is that too fast? Inside, if they return like zero plus HTML. Okay, that's a problem. Plus HTML will fail as well, I presume. I agree with that. <laughs> that could be a file uns unless a, a, a website. That's still a problem, but that could also be very interesting if you apply that to, you know, password hashes. Mm -hmm. Because password hashes may be strings starting with a zero, and if you put them clever on the right side, then you have a problem. Now, I mentioned this, this may return either a content, which may end up empty, or it may also return false if it fails, right? How many other functions have this kind of behavior? Mm, no, not all of them. There's <laughs> like 3,000 on plus uh, functions in PHP. So here is the full list of them, including a number of them that are fairly commonly used everywhere in your code. Every time you use one of those functions, including the esteropos I mentioned and all his cousins, then you should use always a strict comparison because otherwise you may mistake a returning value that is valid and null with an error. There are more though, like all the FTP functions. Um, well. Where is it that I removed them? I get hurt by PHP, we like FTP weekly. Like <laughs> the only thing he does. So <laughs> maybe, I <forgo> <laughs> maybe I forgot the FTP. I don't know. I don't know why I, I remember remove them. But here is a full list of them. So not only usually esteropos is used as the poster child for this error, esteropos comparison. This is not the only one, including the the regex comparison, reading deers, which is even worse because in some mistakes he actually returns a null. Others he returns a false, and last one he returns empty. <laughs> <coughs> so welcome to L, right? Consistency. Thank you. But it's actually in the test, so I actually yeah. uh, I was about to fix that, and I realized that someone actually put a unit test in PHP for that. So I thought maybe this guy really needed it, so I just dropped it. <laughs> everyone is clear with this little problem? Esteropos, everyone heard about this problem, right? Yeah. Right? Everyone knew there were another 22 functions? No, hopefully no one is using e Esteropos anyway. <laughs> so. Another infamous problem. Well, <laughs> where is the problem here? That should be easier. Hmm? Reusing F. Yes, and yeah. The reference here is the problem. It doesn't do anything, right? So I start with two different arrays, A, B, and C, D. I just run two empty loops, and here is the result I get. <laughs> and I did nothing, right? <laughs> so what happens? 
what happens here? <coughs> we start and we say, okay, we would like a reference. So we're going to go on A and B. So that's fine. We don't do nothing, but the reference stays. And then we start again, and F say, okay, yeah, I'm still a reference, and I'm still pointing to the last one. And then we start arraying again. And this means that we actually get the values, PHP get the values from the array too, and put it back in the reference, which hasn't changed. It's still pointing to the initial values we've been going through. And this is how you end up with a double D that's final value is there. I usually end up, when I forgot about that because I still get beaten by this bug, I usually end up with arrays that suddenly drops the last value. Just the last one. And I want to realize that some of the value disappeared. I understand that I forgot to unset the thing. How do you fix that? Whenever there is a modification in the for each like that, you end up unsetting that. Now, unsetting F will not destroy the actual value because it's a reference. It will just destroy the reference, the link between the variable and the actual storage of data in memory. That's all. Here it's actually the most efficient way to modify the array. Okay, of course, here there's no much modification. I agree we can optimize that. But this is, this is the idea. Anytime you have a modification with a reference like that, think about unsetting, even if you don't you reuse it. Because like six months later, you will reuse it and pa. And this is really difficult to debug because you don't know where the values are, where are they coming from, and why is it that this list suddenly has values from the other one? Long time, long time to save, more to save. So, another one that's tricky. What is... Okay, so I think you're going to win the book and now we'll <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but that's the good answer. What's going to be in Z? 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 I'm, you got Z, yeah. What's going to be there on the first line? True. True. And what's going to be on the second one? False. False. Okay, now everyone knows, right? Or just because you expect me to have a trap. No, explain. So how does that happen? How does that happen? The first one is ex interpreted as what? There is precedence, meaning that this has priority over this one. But equal has no priority over double ampersand. How do we read the first one? The first one is assign x to z. Okay, so we get the true, we put it in z. The result of it, we could put parentheses, the result of this is logically ended with y. Okay, but we don't care because this value is not stored anyway. Okay, you know in PHP that, that's the only thing you can do. You, you could put a, a line, put a variable, nothing else, and that works. Useless, but that works. Okay. How do we interpret the second one? The second one says ampersand as priority. So we first start by putting x and combining it logically with y, and that's a false, true and false. The result is now assigned to z. That's a false. Who's read the manual? <laughs> yes. Did you translate it three times like me? Now, how do you know that? This has been on the, on the manual since PHP 3. Okay, maybe with a few lines less, but the one we, knew and we know are there. This is actually fun because the two of them do not have the same precedence, but whatever. The other one is there, and in between we have the one that's boring us. It's all in the documentation, right? You just have to read it. And it's not even translatable, so you should be able to understand that quickly, right? Is there a reason why they choose this? Uh, oh yeah, probably laziness or something. I don't know. <coughs> I don't know. <coughs> Sorry? No. So let's do some more. Okay, I use the semantics to help you understand what's the problem here. We are catching an exception. Okay. 
Yeah. So this class does not exist. Oh, gee, it's still, it's still wrong, actually. I usually write some Dutch here because this won't compile anyway. Um, but the first one is not an actual class. So the catch is a dead code. How is that going to work? When there's a catch, it has to be thrown at some, some point, right? So between the try here, there is some, something is going wrong, throwing an exception. Good. Then the exception arrives here, and then PHP gets the exception E, and it says, OK, what kind of class is that? And you get the full name, the full namespace, and the class name. But this class here, the catch is supposed to process a situation which is a class that does not exist. So PHP is just going to fail, right? No class. Class does not exist. It's not loaded in memory. <laughs> just forget it. And then we go out. So this is always going to be evaluated, the check. And the code in between is now always dead code. Can we lint that, PHP minus L, and check the code? Oh, that's going to work. This is completely decent PHP code, right? We have string names there that build up a names namespace. That's normal. At execution time, do we, can we catch that the class is, does not exist? No, PHP is not going to check that class at that moment. Is supposed to have thrown it at some other points between the try. This will be the job of the through. The through will check that the class does exist because it needs to instantiate it. Yeah, that's difficult to say. But then the, try, the through is we're going to check it. But at that point, you just say, OK, I cannot match the class with the object coming up. <laughs> I don't care. And I just skip it. You've got a big bunch of dead code. And no one is going to tell you. That's going to be the same for the following exception. If it's not an exception, then, well, anyway, nothing is going to be thrown, so it won't uh, be up to this point, right? So you should actually be able to check those codes yourself. This is not anymore PHP's job. This is probably our developer's job to make sure that the catches always lead to something that does exist. Of course, on such a short code, you can imagine that those are unresolved, OK? But you have to think as a wall on your project, because at some point, PHP is going to autoload that from another file and put this feature into the code. That's all you need. So this is going to be dead code. That's actually a huge source of dead code. How does that happen? That happens with situations like that. Why is the code dead? It's not global. I want something more precise, please. No, I said no, not for you. <laughs> yeah, this, th this exception is not in the namespace. So you can imagine that very big, but I mean, people are already problems reading that from the behind. So if it's a really long, someone decides to move the class from one namespace to the other, or just suddenly add namespace with the name of the company, and every class that is grabbing all the exceptions is stuck, because they expe it expects now the exception to be in the namespace X. And you've got a big chunk of dead code. Again, unit test should find it, except if you threw the exception on difficult to, to raise uh, situations. But yeah, unit test should be able to, uh, to, to, to generate the situation and lead to that point. But you have to run the unit test. Hmm? The ID, the ID also could help. That's another thing. Because it can t uh, see the problem as a, as a wall, the project as a wall and all the code. So let's go on with something wrong. That's going to be fun. Yeah, that's the same. Oh, this is the one I, I checked. I, I <laughs> this is going to be another variation of the preceding one. You're trying to make an instance of on something that does not exist. So that will always fail if the class Again, PHP is not going to is going to compile that, is going to run that, and never going to. Again, ID should help, right? So another thing, another list of things, a little gotchas that PHP uh, has is performances. And the first one is probably not specific to PHP. There are two of them here that you could think about. Which are they? There are three lines, so probably. Hmm? The first, oh, oh, OK. Yes. So define is usually slower. And why is define slower? I think, I think the, 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 
person behind wants to answer it. And you're answering a lot also, right? And you're just in the order. So the next guy who's going to answer is behind, right? No, he's silent. <laughs> so why is count faster or slower? Hmm? It's not a function call, so? Mm, no. That's not exactly the one I expect. But that's, the, that's a good idea. Can you go further? It doesn't do any evaluation. It's processed I act compile time. So when PHP get the code, it can check that. And if you're using op opcode cache, then it will put that in the opcode and it will be done once. Okay? On the other hand, define is good if you have dynamical constant. <laughs> ah. Ah, yeah, it's difficult to say. Well, it's like cons variable constant and okay, whatever. People sometimes put you know, all the configuration in a YAML file, and then they load it, and they have a number of defined that will just load those things. Okay? That needs a variable, and that will need a define, so the wall of it will be slow. Okay? On the other hand, on the const, if you have a way to put it there, that will be loaded early and compiled, and then opcode cache will, will save the day. Yeah. Yeah, that should be. Um, I think the opcode will compile, but I don't know if PHP is going to actually make the calculation and then do it. I would think so. I would think so, because m it's actually checking that everything inside the um, the, the Scala instruction here are constants that are known uh, at the beginning, like even uh, static constants or, or normal con other const. It will try to solve that and put that into into uh, and yeah, and then later that will never change. Okay, so that's the uh, the two part. The first one is indeed define. If you can, as much as you can, use const. Okay, it's not going to make your day different, but that's probably going to be a little acceleration. The other one is please pre-process. Okay, please pre-process. It's obvious that 24 hours by, by 60 seconds by 60 minutes will make the result. I mean, everyone knows that by heart, right? Yeah. We, we shall ask any, and I'm sure we, we ask anyone today, and they know, right? Yeah, of course. The first one is more readable. So you can, you can have it. But then you also have to use opcode cache. So at that point, it may be different. But usually pre-process, and I will go on with, that, with the same idea of pre-processing. What is the problem here? What is, the s what is slow in this part of the code? Time? Yeah, well, time is the slowest, of course. It's just a, well, it's just a code. Array. You create an array and you keep adding stuff to it. Exactly. How would I speed up that? I know this is an array, right? So I can just decide, de define it. I could even use the new <coughs> PHP 5.4, but I could even use the recent syntax to make it faster. And at least it will gather the, 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 the data, allocate the memory, and at execution time, it will put the actual value, right? Now, if you think about that, I have like three of them. Do you know any kind of file that has a really long list of that kind of uh, assignations? I'm st I don't. XML? No, no, no. No, no. PHP code. What is the main reason that people have a huge file with a lot of those assignations <laughs> like that? No, not I and I. That no, not database. <laughs> Zentramurg. <laughs> I didn't say who. <laughs> On what kind of occasion do you end up with lots of assignations like that, with big arrays? Things that you don't really want to have in your code. Yeah, translations. <laughs> translations. I mean, you can check a number of projects. <laughs> they have one, one, one file which like eight, 800, 1,000 lines, and all of them one after each other is like that. And every time you run the code, then you load that, and you have all of them one after each other. I'm not oh, sure. They deserve to surfer. <laughs> except when you download it, okay? 
So pre-processing as much as you can, things like that, can also save you some time. And that will be again with things like that. That's exactly the same source. Sorry? OK, we'll see that later, because I didn't put that, that trick uh, at that moment. But no. At least remove the echo. So, OK, just one echo will be faster. The, the function call itself is the slow part at that moment. So if you reduce it, that will be better. Print is faster than echo. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I list that at yet. So next one, slow stuff. So stuff that shouldn't be so slow in PHP. What is the problem? Oh, you, you think that if I just put source directly and as, a, as an argument, it will be much faster? No, no, just if, if instead of array equals array unique array, so then it has to like set up a temporary variable and just copies it. Oh, it will, a, array unique will always make a copy, so. Oh. Assuming that this comes from some kind of database, you just let the database make sure you get unique stuff back. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now imagine that you collected the data somewhere else that has no sorting yeah. option. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now I won't, I won't help you much. Is the uh, parameter by reference? No. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. <coughs> <laughs> I told you. Yes. The problem at that point is actually a unique. A re unique, strangely enough, is a really slow function. It's actually faster to use the other one, and there's a, there's a wealth of other options. You know array count values, mm -hmm. right? It just got all the different values, and the keys, the values goes into keys, and the value itself is a number of operations. It's like a group by on PHP or uh, arrays, okay? Strangely enough, array unique is, is well, even if you don't pro use the extra argument, is really slow, especially when the, 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 the array gets bigger. Uh, it has a second argument, which is probably the solution of the problem, which allow you to, make, to add some sorting. So you can say, OK, you, you make array unique, and you sort that, or you reverse sort that, or something like that. I suspect that it is doing that by default, even if it's not sorting, which means that you give it a big array, and it will just array unique and do the sorting, even if you didn't ask anything. Strangely enough, array count values, which get the different values, count them, and then you drop the values counting, and you just get the, v the keys, will be much faster as soon as the, v the, the array is big enough. No, here you just ki get the keys. Yeah, but it's already yeah. unique. You just, yeah, yeah, yeah right. If you, need both, then you're if you need both, there you're lost. OK, I agree. But at that point, array, array, array unique is actually doing too much work than it's actually advertised. It's not just doing array unique, it's also sorting. That should be two separated concerns that we could run in a separate way. OK? So another one that's really bad, and I think there are two different problems there. So two different problems to see. <coughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm so I don't hear what. Uh, you're changing the array that you're looking through? Yes, that's one of them. That's one of them. Uh, here itself is not a big deal, but there is a change in the, in the original array. And accessing the original array to change it using this old syntax is the slowest way. And the array merge should be outside the loop. Array merge is not too slow, but it's especially using a lot of memory. And this is probably the worst case scenario you can imagine. What's going to happen is we first we go around the first array, and when you arrive here, you say, OK, merge has one element, and row has one element, so I need to allocate two elements, and then I will copy all of them. And then it goes a second loop. And then you go back, and since we have merge here with coming back, say, OK, 
merge as two, and I have to add an extra one. So I will now copy it through three time slots. And then the second terms, yeah, yeah it's a Fibonacci number, you know, it's going to add up. The second term, it comes back, it has four, and then you add an extra one, it's going to allocate a five one, and have all those temporary uh, arrays in between. So if you have 2,000 uh, 2, elements in your, in your array, then you're going to use a huge amount of memory just for that. The idea is, just as you mentioned, then you should actually output the merging ones, because if you use it this way, then it will actually It's going to take everything. Hmm. I'm getting surprised at the moment. I remember explaining something with a, a function call this afternoon. Anyway, so two things. First, when you change something in an array, use the array, the reference version, because, well, first, it's a lot um, smaller. It's a sm lot smaller, and it will use. It will actually just uh, reference the value itself, so you can change it without extra cost of accessing. Just don't forget to unset it here. <laughs> you, know, you know what? You know what? I think last time my slide was before, and I just switched it. OK, I I anyway. <laughs> you want the VAT? All the things are way too complex. And uh, if you're ordering 1,000 elephants, VAT is good. I use the const, so it should be OK. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is actually a ray merge and ask it to gather to gather um, the element. I'm just I don't know why I'm getting surprised. Shouldn't Sorry, but anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm suddenly array. writing. Okay, whatever. So next ones. Okay, we got the gotchas, we got the tricks. Uh, there's a number. Hmm. Another one that's funny. Anything wrong here? Now, don't, again, don't laugh. That happens not often. Not often. Not as bad as the, the arguments, but several are. And the good news is there is help coming up. Right? OK. Uh, on the other hand, there is this one, which is far more common. Deja vu coding. Yeah, deja vu coding. Copy paste some, something that was left. It still works. Not x no x defined. <laughs> okay, so uh, dead code and this one actually it's it's kind of a fairly common problem. Okay, I think every 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 pro project I've tested at least they have a one switch. It's kind of a very regular thing. Uh, there are others instructions that people never use like do y for some reason. But switch there are always one or two of them, and it's kind of easy to end up with several cases that are identical. I'm not sure, does the ID check that? Yes. Yeah? OK, so you're already well. The other one that works exactly on the same principle, which are the doubles? So I think anyone who's answered before I finish my question is the one who wrote the code, right? OK, so yes. Two of the, no, that's the next. That's too fast. OK. Um, another one that's really a PHP trick is <coughs> the following. PHP will actually change the keys. It will accept either, either integers or strings. But if the string is also available as an integer, it will actually do the type typecasting. OK? So it will typecast the one into one. It will typecast the string into a number. And it will also typecast our friend the, the, the number with a, with a comma. Depending on the origin of data, you really want to uh, check the, the, the keys you're using, because otherwise you will end up it's destroying one another. How long do I have? No, 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 no. Type casting like that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, here is something that is, not, that is not a problem itself, but that's a classic. Do not use no scream. That's really an operator typical from PHP, but it's always, always there. Once they fix that open, that will be a lot easier to drop. It is. The one place that you still, you still have a so yeah. yeah, but that's the only one. I, I've seen a number of other situations that was that are now clean, and you can drop them, especially with files. Exceptions in the engine. Yes. Make that a little bit better. But there are a number of other situations where you should. Anywhere else, don't. Yeah. Or use XDebug and turn on the stream operator. 
Okay, now something a little different, not in the .php documentation. Yeah, you know what? And that still works. <laughs> yeah, it still works. Yeah, you can, you can use it. Actually, when you end up with a static, this will just be undefined. So if you can make your way with undefined value, you can use it. It will just be null. Can you define this? At that point, no, no, no. There is no way. Uh, no, at, at least at that point, there is no way you can change this. I mean, depend, except calling value on it. So that won't work. You cannot assign this. This is the only one that will always. Uh... Last one that are not so specific, maybe to PHP. Can, can you count how many ternary operators are there? So, oh shit is not a number, so I will not accept <laughs> this answer. And that's real code, actually, if someone can, you, if you want to take a look. This is something that translating uh, something from Portuguese to Brazilian, so. Yeah, it's sti it still works. I mean, it's probably doing any, anything. Three? Yes, I agree. The first one to go from the, from the inside is there. Okay, and we're, so the guy actually probably get lost, so he put some uh, parentheses, so he knows which are the side, probably on the larger screen than whatever I have here is, uh, is going to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if that would compile, you know what? I'm wondering if that would compile. Mm, not necessarily, because this is going to, do, to, to be turned into, to be a uh, concatenated with that. And there is another one there. Again, I think we, we can understand that there are parentheses, so it helps a lot. And then, of course, there is the, the major one. Okay. Um, I've seen, so three level is probably one of the worst, but ternary, nesting ternary operators is quite common. Quite common, especially in templating systems. Yeah, so templating system is like, okay, yeah, why not? But in, in normal code, this is, this is coming from normal code. I mean, look at that. It's actually a sign, so it's going to be reused later. I mean, why not have a real full-blown if-then-else structure that would be clean and at least readable? Because this was on one line, okay? I'm, I'm helping you by putting that on six lines, but um, no, it was on one line, so it's because of long. It's, of course, off-screen, so you don't know where to stop. And I think the, the different concatenation doesn't help. So that's, that's way too much. Uh, yeah, ternary, uh, ternary operators, one nested is good. No, no, no nested, please. One is good, and hmm, I don't like that too much, but that's probably my own preferences. Two is bad, and three is something that's fairly more common than I expected. Uh, something that's funny. No, this is not funny. This is not funny. <laughs> so two different things, the hard-coded credentials, and uh, what I like is usually the, you can find them directly in the FTP connection. So that's one thing, okay? Strings in, a, in such a place is really bad. Sometimes they are hidden because they are set in an in a FTP user like that. And then they are used as a variable. So it's kind of much more clean. But they are still like in the same code. So uh, the fun part is that there are people who actually scan big code repository like GitHub and they actually find a number of them, okay? So you can find MD5, MD you can five, uh, find um, uh, seeds for, uh, for the passwords. Uh, you can find a lot of interesting things. And just, just reading that and see a big regex or something like that. You can find a number of things. So um, that's outcoded thing in, in general are really bad. OK, uh, something weird here, something weird. Why is that some kind of weird code here? Yes? Uh, because if you don't give the function error filter, we'll automatically uh, check parentheses. Oh, right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> That's a win, I have to admit. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's, uh, if I use any longer function, it will probably go out of the, the screen there. So I will blame the screen. Okay. If you can imagine that this is just for the showing purpose, you have a class with a static method. What is wrong with this static method? Well, because I'm missing a bracket. Uh, One bracket? Where? Yeah, at the end. Um, array filter doesn't return uh, an array. array oh, right, right, right. The one for the count, right? Okay, yeah. 
Is a return true false? Yeah. It doesn't belong to a user. It doesn't belong to a user. It does not use this. This is not a function. This is not a method. This is a function. Yeah, it says static. Yeah. So what? It's not even re re related to, to user. Is that right? It's stateless. Yeah, it's just just a method. It should be a function, not not a method. It doesn't use a property. It doesn't re call other methods. It's absolutely unrelated to the class it is. Yeah, that's a matter of preference. Okay, but then yeah, that's a matter of preference. Counter. If it's a counter, it's properly static because it doesn't have side effects. Yeah. Doesn't have side effects, but it should at least at least use other static properties. <laughs> no. I can put that somewhere else in the code, remove the class user, well, probably give it some other things, and that would work. Anyway, I think that's weird. At least, yeah, we could actually use it without an array, and that would rely on local properties. Something that's either class or, or this. Preferably not static, because then you create global scope. Well, this is the kind of stuff you see a lot in the util classes. Yeah. That's it's a bunch of methods that have no relation and put under the Exactly. At least that, that ranks, as for me, that ranks as something that should not belong here. It could be used by something else to count empty things. So make it a method, make it a function so it's available everywhere, and the user class is small, some smaller. But as you say, it's also a part, uh, part of it is, is uh, a choice. I mean, you can decide that this belongs here for some reason. Then again, like the <coughs> main thing here, I don't think it's code quality wise, but it's usability. You can your IDE can import a class, but mm -hmm. uh, it won't IDE import a function. Could not import it a won't function. import a function. So I think this is human. That, that's a choice. In the end, that's a choice. Final one. <coughs> Why is I useless here? It doesn't require anything. OK, the names are misleading, but who cares? <laughs> I mean, I is not such a clever, uh, clever interface name, right? <laughs> again, it fits in the screen. I'm sorry to use that again. <laughs> That's going to be the motto for tonight, right? So why is it useless? It's used once. Well, yeah, OK, I can, I can copy paste several of them. or made them in several files, so I will not break uh, some rules. Actually, I is completely useless. It's, it's not used at all. I mean, I can, I can drop it, and it still works. How do you know that something is using an interface? Well, I suspect that if you're putting it there, it's a really Yeah, you need, you need actually to put it either in a type hint or to use it as an instance of. Yeah, but instance I don't see the rest of the code. So no, 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 this is, <laughs> no, I stayed there. So I, I, from this, I can't say. I mean, from this, I would. But most of the time, assume, yeah. instances, interfaces, are just used to create functions, uh, classes, sorry. They are not even used as a type hint, or they are never used for instance of. Where you can try to check that the object has a number of capabilities, then you can rely on the methods that are available. Mm, I, I would argue, depending on how, you, even if you're not actually type hinting, mm -hmm. um, if, if for internal documentation, there is some value to That's ID job. The ID yeah, will tell you that, OK, do you have a user. It should look at the, those are those methods, and then you put it, and then that's over. If you're in Java, then you have abstraction. You compile it, and the abstraction goes away. But it helps you coding. Fine. In PHP, this still means that when we have, when you have here, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're going to finish. When you have here, we have to load the the interface. When you have to load the interface, do the check, and you have to do that all the hits. That's too much work. Okay. So if you're using interfaces, make sure that you have at least a few instances of the eye of the parents, of course. Or a type hint, otherwise you, your interface is completely useless. Well, it also depends. If you, you might not be using that, but if you're writing an open source library, maybe the person will Someone else will use it. Yeah, but that's the, the, the framework excuse, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm not final because everyone's going to use it. That's important, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's good. It's also a reality. Yeah, yeah it is. You're writing a framework? Maintain the framework. Yeah, okay. Doing open source. So at that point, you need interfaces. So anyway, <coughs> whatever I've told you during this afternoon, the, this evening, this hour of laughing, I have gathered them in ClearPHP and 
that's exactly what I was telling you at the beginning. This is a reference with a huge number of recommendations. All of them get a name, some explanations, some examples, do and don't, eventually uh, some um, other material to read and get some uh, ideas or arguments for or less. Okay? Um, actually, the most, I think the most important one is the name probably, because at least you have a short reference to it. And for example, if we rely back on the first and initial uh, WordPress standard, we can change a number of them. Why is it? I, I'm sorry, I just got the, uh, oh, and the double quote. No, we didn't change that. Yeah. So among the list, I can, I, I mentioned that the green part was the one that could be found in PHP because it relies on code that should be cleaner. Regular expression is something I couldn't find. I'm not sure they mentioned that you shouldn't use the slash E option. And it kind of really old stuff because it has been dropped in 5.4. So I'm not sure I want to make that a, a, a rule. But no short tag, your that condition, no imply, no scream, all of that. The only one that's a rule in clear PHP that does not exactly apply to uh, WordPress is that dimension that you should not use any direct call to the database, but use the API. I can make, make sense. They're a kind of platform. So they rely, you, they rely that you, use, you do not use direct things. I have the, other, the equivalent that say that I require or recommend to always use prepare statements. That's the kind of, uh, of the same. Ternary operator here is something also I'm not sure I want to include, but they mentioned that you can use the ternary operator, no problem, list it. They mention it also. But uh, they ask you to do straight conditions and not not. So Instead, except of saying empty, you say not empty, things like that. Okay. Uh, the source for the, the rules we've seen tonight, uh, well, there is a number of things that were creative, like the first one you've met, but uh, I read just the manual PHP, and there are a wealth of them. There's a number of warnings that tell you that that shouldn't work on the OS, on these windows, on this other OS, or in certain situations, or things like that. There's a number of them. I try to collect them and to give them out of their context. Often they are somewhere like at the end of the page and there is a little disclaimer thing. In that case, that will fail. Okay, so if this is more often than that, then it uh, made its way to the, to the, art to the reference. <coughs> There's also a number of articles that I read that I either complement the, uh, the, the rules or that will just be the base for things like that. I actually re listened to Raphael Dom's uh, how do you call that? Objects, catalytics, whatever. Gymnastics. Okay, yeah, gymnastics. And I got a number of the rules inside, so that there are ideas. PHP Fig is a PHP the uh, framework in Terra. Well, this is even worse than your word. Um, they have a number of ideas there. Some of them are conventions. Some of them are more interesting in terms of bug prone or bugless code. I got that. Okay, and. There are situations that are the, the most important, I think, from this reference, and we already have discussion about that tonight, is that you can actually have, don't like some of them. The idea of the reference is to have everything there so you can pick up the one you want. Can you spot me the two different problems and the one who said concatenation can get the information now? Two problems on this one. Echo is not a function, but that's not a problem by itself. So, please follow. Oh, okay, so that's the third one. Simple so, simple quotes. <laughs> okay, simple quotes, I agree, but echo is not a function, so. So, it evaluates to <coughs> one false. <coughs> <coughs> what? Echo is not a function, so it's actually a language construct, and one of those language constructs that do not require parentheses. So you don't need the parentheses there. It will work. Actually, the parentheses is probably the reason why you ended up putting concatenation here. One thing that makes a difference, who said PHP and echo? Uh, oh, print and echo, yeah. okay. The main difference between print and echo, both of them being almost the same, Echo accepts several arguments. If you want to speed up and actually to have less greedy PHP codes, you should just make it this way. What is the difference between the two different, the two different instruction? This instruction, okay. Oh, 
This one says, OK, I will send to the brother three elements, PHP, no, this tag, this variable, this tag. Echo just grab them one after each other. It's already there in, in memory. <whistles> Threw them away. It's finished. Now, what is the difference between this uh, with this one? This one says, I would like you to send the result of this concatenation to the brother. Good. What do we need? We need this, this string, this other string, this there. I will first allocate memory. I will first allocate memory for this and that and that. Double the quantity of memory. Make a copy. Send that. Luckily enough, of course, you are using something that is less than 10 megabytes of paragraphs. <laughs> I mean, unless you are actually uh, publishing the Bible as a text flow or something. OK. <laughs> so if it's short enough, no one really, really, really care, right? If you're using that a lot, a lot, or if you end up with something that, I don't know, a movie or something, then you will probably push something. Don't judge that. I've seen people, well, it was, it was years ago, but I've seen people trying to build a streaming server by actually doing an echo on an MP3 inside a wire. Yeah, it actually generated logs by the gigabyte because PHP at that time would actually dump everything <laughs> in the log, so we actually had the same uh, song several times in the log. That was strange. <laughs> anyway, so this is, this, is, this is strange because at the last moment you say, okay, I have this amount of memory, okay, let's copy it a second time and then throw it away. You're doubling the amount of memory there. Now, of course, memory is cheap. This is, no, then you're right. Memory is cheap. This is probably uh, not going to eat up much because even if it's 10 megabytes, well, but at, on a crowded server, it may show. Think about it. Basically, this is just that. Now, I actually made some contribution to 54 open source project by doing that, just removing them. <laughs> so half of them didn't even respond. After a month, I kind of think they're either dead or... And on the, the last one, half of them accepted, the other half just dropped that. Okay, some of them actually call me that I'm back from the 70s. <laughs> and this is right, so I just, I just cannot agree. But. Did any of them start a long thread with GIF images? And, 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 uh, that's usually what happens. Anyway, so no, well, one guy was kind of rude. The other one just said, okay, it's pointless. We can't even accept that. Or sometimes it was just one change. And one change in you know, an error debug statement, something like that. I don't care. I didn't even read the code. I mean, I, it was automatically post. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, what's important there, on the 110 of them I currently have, I kind of expect to have 200 of them by the end of the year or something. Uh, don't try to put them, all of them, in the same time and make your selection. There's a number of things that made you re react and say, okay, this is wrong because I have that situation or that and that. It's okay. It's a reference, okay? I do not bring my own dictionary and try to use all the words every time I give a conference, right? <laughs> well, knowing that I have four words in Dutch, that would be a short conference. But you have a reference. Take a look at them. They have reference. They have explanations. They have a name. Just pick the one you want. That would be your shortlist. If you have some more, I'll be happy to hear about them. Please come to me. I'm not sure I will stay long, but I would like to hear about them. I'm probably missing a few of them. But that will be a reference. Use that for your own project. So at least you have a list of things that everyone can check easily, learn about it, and make sure your code is clean. clear. So more rules to come, and that will be the end. You can imagine how funny it is to have this book to give. <laughs> it's an N, not a key, uh, not an R. You need the room, right? Uh, well, we're going to give you questions. Uh, anyone? Oh, questions, questions, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. A what? Code sniffer. Code sniffer? Oh, okay. Um, no, I don't have a code sniffer implementation of that. I think a number of the rules can be turned into code sniffer sniffs, because that's the word. I'm working on a static analyzer. The main difference, for example, is that I will call it, I get the whole abstract tree and I get further into the, the analysis. Like? So at least, anyway, <laughs> time's up. Um, so I think be, uh, pitch, code sniffer is good to, to check. Well, you just get one file and you, you check the elements. If you want to check, for example, that uh, 
the parent is actually an existing class with the, uh, the, uh, the, parent, the uh, property it is required. That may be more difficult with code sniffer, and I'm taking that into account. That will be Exacat, that's the name of the company initially, and I'm supposed to produce the, the code in a moment. I should have done that today, but obviously I was preparing this conference, even though it was too long. Um, so yeah, there will, be a, there will be a tool for that. More questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah.